Good evening campers, it's me Kieran. Today we are going to talk about formulism. This style of literary criticism, I would argue, is the one that most people think of when they are encountered with the word literary criticism. A lot of people's strifes, struggles and resentment towards literary criticism is from formulism. Before we get into it, formalism emerged in the early 20th century. Formalism is somewhat synonymous with new criticism, which was a revolutionary school of thought in America. I would say there are three main principles when it comes to formalism, that of autonomy, unity and defamiliarization. Formalists conduct close reading and therefore are interested in the intrinsic machinations of a work rather than worrying about anything external. And now we've got that summary out of the way, let's talk about formalism in a bit more depth. Formalism as a critical theory emerged in the early 20th century and was developed by the new critics in America from Russian formalism, with key figures such as Viktor Shaklovsky and Roman Yakuzhan playing significant roles within the development of Russian formalism. But as we discussed in our before theory video, literary criticism continually expands on itself, before the work of the Russian literary scholarship would find its way in America, where the new critics got their hands on it. Some of the major players here within new criticism are John Crow Ransom, Cleith Brooks and T.S. Eliot, who all adapted and expanded on the Russian formalist ideas. The formalists, the Russians and the Americans alike, wish to find a more objective way to study a book, and therefore focused on the intrinsic qualities of a text rather than any external influences. Close reading plays a huge part in this as we start looking at the form of the text, the structure of the text, the lyrical and poetic qualities of a work. These qualities supersede any of the political, economic or social contexts that a book was written in. Formalists believe that the meaning of the text can be derived from the text itself solely garnered from the literary elements and the artistic expression that is used within the work. Some of you might be joining the dots here and thinking, well, is this where death of the author comes into because we consider the text and not the author? And you would be correct. But let's not think about close reading or death of the author. We'll cover those in different videos. Instead, let's explore three key principles that I feel summarise formalism succinctly. Autonomy of the text. Formalists argue that the text should be studied as a self-contained entity, that all meaning can be derived from the text itself. The text should be independent from authorial intent and external influences. The second principle is the idea of organic unity. Formalists assert that every aspect of a work should move towards the grander idea of a work. They argue that in analysing specific parts or certain aspects of a work such as the plot, the character, setted, style, that all of it should function together to give a harmonious idea of the work as a whole. All of this to create a unified artistic expression. The third principle revolves around defamiliarization. Formalists argued the reader should read works that challenge their preconceived notions. But in the context of formalism, that doesn't mean you just read something that you don't like. Just to pluck out an example, say if you're atheist, it doesn't mean that you should go out reading theist works. That's not what it means. Instead, they want readers to experience the familiar in an unfamiliar way. Knowing that formalism is to emerge around the same time as modernism, we see a lot of crossover in innovation and artistic expression. Now that we've explored these three principles, let's talk about the various methods that formalists use to analyse literary works. Formalists closely examine the structure and organisation of a text. They pay great attention to narrative techniques such as point of view, time manipulation and plot development. Through scrutinising how a narrative is constructive and therefore delivered to a reader, the formalists sought to understand how readers would obtain different emotional responses and different interpretations of a work. An additional method that the formalists used was in the analysis of literary devices. Literary devices covers things such as metaphor, imagery, symbolism, and author's mastery of these techniques was ultimately in turn 
elevate their work. Formalism had a profound effect and really did revolutionise literary criticism. And I would argue that its legacy a hundred years on from when it was originated is still as strong today as it was then. It's important for me to stress that formalism does have its limitations. The refusal to consider almost the negation of historical, societal and political context that often influenced works or indeed was a reaction to the creation of a work is somewhat of a naive perspective to take. Furthermore, formalism is highly subjective. How does one critic deem if a author has a skillful mastery of metaphor over another person? Moreover, and a dire consequence of formalism is that you can get criticism that is very pernickety and moves very niche. But that's all for now. This has been my comprehensive guide to formalism. And if you're interested in formalism or have any other questions, please let me know down below.